glad you've come to share in this Mother's Day service. Two or three things to make mention of. Next Sunday after the morning service, we will be having our Rose Hill Dinner Theater. We will have, be having a baked potato bar and some entertainment to go along with that. So keep that in mind. Four weeks today will be the 76th homecoming of Rose Hill. We will have a sign-up sheet next week for things that we are going to need help with, so keep those things in mind. We're glad that you've come today to share in this. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, as we bow in your presence this morning, Lord, we just pause to tell you that we love you, and we thank you for your many blessings on our lives. We thank you for all these mothers that are here this morning, Lord. Thank you so much, Heavenly Father, that you gave us mothers to love us. Lord, you have just been so good to us. Heavenly Father, we pray that everything that we say and do in this service this morning might lift up praise and glorify the wonderful name of Jesus. For it's his name we pray. Amen. You ready for the choir? Yep. All the, all the ladies. All ladies to the choir. No, just mothers. All the ladies. Now, we're not going to make up the Come on, ladies.
And we like to honor you others. We're glad you're here with us. Uh, you know, for years, a lot of times churches would, would spend two dollars and get you a little trinket that you. Well, we decided to spend a little bit more for person. We have six twenty dollars gift certificates to four kids. Stand in front, we're going to get a picture of you afterwards. So, Sam and Edward, would you come up and be the helpers? Edward's going to read the names, read the names, and nobody knew it, so you couldn't uh, pay him up front. <laughs> I knew. Hey, Edward. Hey, Edward.
wish a very happy Mother's Day to all you mothers, and you're so special. Amen. We'll continue worshiping the Lord with his tithes and offerings. Ushers, if you come. see all of you today. We meet here every Sunday to worship our awesome God and you're very welcome to come back every Sunday. It's good to see you that time. Hansel's a bunch of ladies today, wasn't it? If you call them Hansel. I guess that's all right. Beautiful. My wonderful wife.
you to come forward and pray. Let's, let's just sing this song. His strength is perfect when our strength is gone. Touch them. 
bless our church that it might be an outreach. And we think of Larry Furrier who had successful knee replacement surgery Friday. Should get to come home today. We just pray that you bless him. Touch his heart and his life. And Father, we pray especially for these that are at your altar. You know what the needs are. And we just pray, Lord, that in a special way that you meet those needs. As only you can do. Thank you for being with us and for loving us. And I just pray, Lord, that your hand continue to be so close to us. And I pray, Lord, for dads and moms and grandmas and grandpas that are praying for unsaved loved ones. Lord, we know that time is growing short. I pray that you would help us to have a sense of urgency. And then, Lord, as we pray each Sunday, we ask now that you walk up and down our, around our altar and up and down each pew. And would you give each one of us that big daddy's hug that we all need. And we'll be careful to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. For it's in Jesus' name we ask all these things. Amen. Well, I'm thankful for all the kids here today. I'm thankful for the mothers. And I'm thankful for the mother's mother, which we will call grandmothers. What the grandmothers, the mothers would be here. The mother's kids wouldn't be here. So started started back then.
Reverend come next, I would like to share a testimony if I may. I got a call this morning from my youngest son. And I guess I never had thought about Mother's Day like this before. And I said, son, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be a mother. So I just praise the Lord for all of our kids. Many of us have our kids with us here today, and many of us don't. And many of us kids are not where they should be with the Lord. And sometimes as a mother, we look back and maybe we think, maybe I failed them in some way. Maybe I didn't do what I should do as a mother. But I just placed them in the Lord's hands today, our children, that gave us the blessing of being a mother. And I praise the Lord for our kids. And let's, I know we will all remember to keep them in our prayers as well today. I praise him for my kids and for the blessing that being a mother is. Amen. Amen. Let's stand for the reading of God's word. Today we're going to be reading Ephesians 6, 1 through 3. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth. Lord, we thank you for this scripture this morning. Lord, it is so precious to have honored our parents and to honor them now. Lord, we just praise you for our parents, gone or still here with us. We thank you for what they are to our lives in what they mean to us, Lord. We just praise you for them. Be with us in this service this morning, Lord. And as Steve brings the message to us, help us to have open ears to what you are saying to us through him. Give us your message, Lord. Help us to follow you. Help us not to pretend, but to really follow you, Lord. Help us to keep you in our hearts. And help us to honor and obey you. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for everything that you've done in our lives and everything that you're going to do. Now be with us. In thy precious holy name we pray. Amen. 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 I heard a story not too long ago about a teenager that was embarrassed to go out with her mother anywhere. You see, her mother had some horribly disfigured arms. And one day, her mother took her shopping with her, and when she went into the grocery store to pay for her bill, as she reached her arm out, the clerk looked at it in, in horror. The little teenager was so embarrassed, and she went home and through tears, she told her mom, I hate going anywhere with you because you are such an embarrassment to me with your arms that way. That's what that hurt the mother. And she waited for about an hour until she went to her daughter's room to tell her the story for the first time of what had really happened. She said, years ago when you were just a baby, I woke up to flames in the house. The whole house was on fire, and I realized that I could very easily have gotten out the front door without any problem, but I thought, I cannot live without you. So she said, I ran through your room, through the flames, to get to your room. I picked you up amidst the fire and kind of held you like this. And I rushed, dashed out the building. My arms were on fire, burning. And she said, as I got out, I looked at you and I thought it was all worthwhile. First time this teenager had ever heard that story. And she cried out and she said, oh, Mom, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. Moms are so 
very special. Amen. 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 They go that second and third and fourth mile for us. And mothers, we salute you today for who you are and for the love that you have for your kids. This morning, the title of the sermon is real simple. It's honor thy mother. Mothers are invaluable. That means you can't place a value on them. There's no way to put a value on a mother. There are some things that are produced routinely, and they may not be worth much, but there are other things that have an outstanding beauty. They're reliable, they're durable, and they have a great value. Motherhood is a treasure beyond description. One man said, good mothers are like diamonds. They're beautiful, they're durable, and they're limited in number. But moms know their stuff, don't they? Amen. All moms know their stuff. Uh, there was a story uh, that I ran across the other day. He talked about a mom. She was walking outside down the street with a four-year-old daughter. The four-year-old saw something on the ground, and of course she said, this looks good. She reached down to pick it up, started to put it in her mouth. The mom said, don't put that in your mouth. She said, why? She said, it's been outside. We don't know where it's come from. We don't know what's on it. And it's probably got germs all over it. And at this point, the little girl looked at her mother and with an all awestruck look on her face, she said, Wow, how do you know all this stuff? <laughs> Mom said, I thought quickly, and I said, Well, all moms know this stuff. It's on the mommy test. You have to know it or they won't let you be a mommy. We walked along for about two or three more minutes as my daughter pondered this new information, and finally she goes, Oh, I get it. So if you don't pass the test, then you have to be the daddy, right? <laughs> the mom says, I smile, and I said, you're exactly right. <laughs> I think mother that's what Solomon had in mind in Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. But Moses said to us in part of the Ten Commandments, honor your father and mother, but we'll zero in on honoring your mother. Every mother is one of a kind and has eternal value. In Ephesians, Paul picks the only commandment that has a promise to it. And you know those children who have a good relationship with their parents mm -hmm. enjoy a better quality of life than those who don't. Well, what exactly is a mother? If you'd like to fill in the blanks, here we go with the first one. What qualifies a woman to be called a mother? A mother is not just a person that gives life. The giant sea turtles lay eggs and then they desert the eggs. So they're definitely not mothers. The next blank, mother is much more than just giving birth. Mother is creating an environment that causes a child to live well. You know, children love their fathers, but when they're sick or when things are in a turmoil, it's mom that they call out for. It's mom that's the one that can make everything well again. It's mom that is that safety figure that's there. Mothering is creating an environment. That's a good environment for the child. It means caring, feeding, loving, nurturing, protecting, staying by the bedside of a sick child. It means giving quality and value to the continuation of that child's life. And you know, there are lots and lots of ladies who have given this quality that have never given birth to anyone, but they've become a mother. And normally they tell us we receive all of our aesthetic values, such as sensitivity, tenderness, and our emotional stability from our mothers. But in many cases, we get our strength, our work ethics, and our physical development from our fathers. I heard the story the other day about a four-year-old and a six-year-old who bought a, went to, the, went to the flower shop and they bought a big garden plant and they brought it home and presented it to their mother. They bought it with their money. They had saved that money and they were so proud of it. And they presented that flower pot to mom and mom was just said, oh, this is wonderful. And the six-year-old had a sad look on his face and said, but mom, there was a bouquet in there that was just beautiful and we wanted so much to get that for you. Instead of the flower plant, but we just didn't have enough money. And it even had a ribbon on it, and on that ribbon, it had the words, rest in peace. <laughs> and, we, and we just thought 
That's the one thing that, that would be perfect because you're always asking for just a little piece so you can have some rest. But we couldn't get that for you. Well, many things have changed in our world. One thing is still for true. Everyone needs those qualities that only mothers can do within us. Ken Crockett uh, shares the joys of motherhood. He says that there was the uh, mother of three very notoriously ornery kids. One day was asked, ma'am, if you had to do all of the work again, would you still have children? She said, oh yes, but different ones. <laughs> There was a little zealous boy who was pledging his love and his promise and support to his mother. And he said, when I grow up, Mom, I'm going to buy you an electric can opener. I'm going to buy you an electric toaster. I'm going to buy you an electric stove. And Mom, I'm even going to buy you an electric chair. <laughs> the joy of motherhood is what a woman experiences when all the children are finally going to bed and are asleep. I figured you mothers would all say, Amen. Amen. And it's blank. Mothers are very special. And you are. Mothers are the healing arms of our society. Many children have been healed by mothers who stayed by their bedside in the hospital, some illness or what have you. And as a pastor, I've seen moms provide far better medicine than the doctor can prescribe. Just that child knowing mom was there. And you know, I had a fairly decent relationship with my kids, but when they were hurt and sick, it was not dad that they called out for. It was mom, and I'd probably the same in your family. Moms have that very special, special place in their children's hearts. How should we treat our mothers who are so important in our lives? How should we treat them? Well, the next one, Paul said that we should honor them. Honor them. What's that mean? That word literally means to esteem, to value as precious. It also means to pay an appropriate tribute to the ones who have done such great things for us. Some of the ways of paying tribute and showing one another how valuable she is to us would include your next plan. Treat her with respect. Treat her with respect. One of the things that alarms me today, I see children sassing their mothers and getting away with it. I think I shared it with you when we were young. If our kids sassed us, we took care of it. It didn't happen again for a while. They remembered it. And we would tell our children, the reason we don't permit you to do that is we want you to grow up to be trained well. We want you to have respect. And you know, if kids do not respect their parents, they will not respect their teachers. They will not respect their employers. They will not respect the law enforcement. And ultimately, they will not respect God. So the dads and moms, you have a tremendous responsibility to teach your kid respect. And it starts with you. Amen. Dad and mom, it starts with you guys. And I can remember one time when Danielle was young enough that she was in a grocery cart. And there was this little boy just giving his mom fits. And if he was old enough to know the words, I'm sure he would have probably cussed her out. That was, he was that bad with her, just screaming at her and slapping at her. And Danielle looked at me and she said, Dad, she was probably about four, she said, it's too bad those parents don't love that baby boy any better than that. A lot of wisdom there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Respect. That's what we are to teach our children, to respect, because it all starts with us. Mothers are so special. We're supposed to honor them. Treat them with respect. Pay attention to their opinions, even if, heaven forbid, they don't agree with what you think. Listen to it. And then explain, show gratitude for the things that she's done for you. Show gratitude. Do you know that by the time you're 18, your mother has almost prepared 20,000 meals for you? Figure that one out. There's a, uh, there was a song that was made popular by Melba Montgomery back in 1974, and it goes like this. It's called No Charge. Have you heard of it? My little boy came into the kitchen this evening while I was fixing supper, and he handed me a piece of paper he'd been writing on. 
And after wiping my hands on my apron, I read it, and this is what it said. For mowing the yard, five dollars. For making my own bed this week, one dollar. For going to the store, 50 cents. Watching my little brother while you were shopping, 25 cents. For taking out the trash, one dollar. Getting a good report card, five dollars. And raking the yard, two dollars. Total load, fourteen dollars and seventy-five cents. Well, I just stood there looking at him expectantly, and a thousand memories flashed through my mind. So I picked up the pen and turned the paper over. This is what I wrote. For the nine months I carried you, growing inside me, no charge. For the nights I sat up with you, doctored you, prayed for you, no charge. For the time and the tears and the cost of the years, there's no charge. And when you add it all up, the full cost of my love to you is no charge. Amen. For the nights filled with dread and the worry ahead, no charge. For advice and knowledge and the cost of your college, no charge. For the toys, the food, the clothes, and for wiping your nose, there's no charge, son. When you add it all up, the full cost of my love is no charge. Well, when he finished reading, he got some great big old tears in his eyes. And he looked up at me and he said, Mama, I sure do love you. And then he took the pen and in great big letters, he wrote across his paper, no charge. <laughs> That's what mamas do for us, isn't it? Next like live a life that she can be proud of. You know, today we have so many young people that do things that go against their total training. And as a pastor, I've been in some situations where I've been down to jail and I've seen mothers crying because their son got in trouble. And they said, why did God let this happen? Have you heard of free agency, free will? God allows us to do certain things and that's what happened. Your son made a choice. Think before you act. Think before you act. Think before you act. That's the one thing that's going to make your mom feel so good about it. Think before you act. And then the next one, let her know that you love her. Let her know that you love her. Don't just say it. Show it. How can you do that? Do the dishes without being asked. Vacuum around the house. Clean up. Pick up. And get her something that tells her that she's important to you. You know, it doesn't have to be anything real expensive. Faith is not my mother, but she's the mother of my kids. And you know, there were many times when we were in the Air Force and different places where we didn't have any money. Sometimes I'd stop by and say, I'm going to date myself and get her a 10 cent candy bar. <laughs> Remember those days? And bring it home to her. And she'd be so excited that, not that it was a cheap thing, it was that I thought about it. Do that for your mom. Just yeah. something small. Just say, hey, mom, I love you. And I was thinking about you. Those things mean far more than anything else would. I had, a, had Belinda type in your bulletin of the day a story about the three sons that bought gifts for their mother. Read that before you, before you throw it away. Uh, you know, one of the things that was neat about Mother's Day and Father's Day in our house, we always looked forward to what gifts the kids would get her. You know, we didn't really, really care about the gifts because, uh, as my son would say, well, Danielle, what kind of cup did you get Mom this year? <laughs> she always got coffee cups. That, just, that was okay. But they made homemade cards a lot, and it was kind of neat to look at the homemade cards. I remember one time Danielle wrote a, Dear Mom, I love you very, very, very much. B-E-R-R-Y, very much. Faith was going through some things a year or two ago and ran across some of those cards that the kids had given her that she'd say. Those are, those are the things that say, I love you. And you know, our moms still love that even for moms 90 years old or 100 years old. They still love getting stuff like that. Give them those things and let them know that you still love them. When my mom was still alive in the nursing home, we got to the place to where we really didn't know what to get her for Mother's Day, for birthday, for Christmas, because she had everything she needed. And one day Faith said, you know what, I'm going to get some flowers. And I said, well, that's a good idea. So we ordered some 
process and so <coughs> And uh, if you do it that way, it's not cheap. I'll tell you that up front. We found out, so oh my goodness. So, well, we got them for mom. And so I had them delivered the day before Mother's Day. And on Mother's Day, I called her and I said, Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. And she said, Well, thank you, Steve. I said, Did you get some flowers yesterday? She said, Well, they brought them to me, but I, they were so pretty. I told them, I said, Oh, well, they're not for me. They got to be for somebody else. And I said, Are you going to come in? Well, yeah. She said, Those are for you. Well, who are they from? They're from Steve and Faith Coleman. She said, Well, that's my son. And you know, she went on and on and on about those flowers that we sent her. And my sister said, Steve, you know, I finally sneaked them out and they were dead. She wouldn't leave my throne wide. <laughs> so, you know, for, for quite a while, that's what we do. We send flowers to her because that was one thing that she could appreciate. <clears throat> so, one of the things that I tell you people at funerals, send flowers to them while they're alive. Amen. Don't wait until they're passed on. They don't mean anything when they pass on. Send flowers to them while they're alive. Nell Davis, some of you remember Nell Davis. Nell was one of my friends, and she was in the nursing home at Good Shepherd. I'd go over and see her about every two weeks and spend an hour with her, and we'd just chat. And she'd tell me how it was living in a nursing home. And one day I said to Nell, I said, every time I come in, there's a little old guy that sits in a wheelchair right by the door. It's almost like he's waiting for me, because I would usually come the same day, every two weeks, the same time. And he gets the biggest smile on his face. And I just, hey, how are you doing? How's things going? And he just smiled and talked to me. And then I'd say, well, I'll talk to you later. She said, yeah, that's so and so. I said, well, what's his story? She said, nobody comes to visit him. Nobody. I said, kids? Nope. I said, you got to be kidding me. So my 10, 15 seconds is the only thing that guy has looked forward to. She said, just about. She said, he's a very friendly guy. But he's been forgotten. Don't do that with your mama. Whether she's in a nursing home or a retirement center or in a house, let her know you love her. Spend some time with her. Take her out to lunch if you can. Visit her if she's not able to go out. Send her letters if she's in a distance. Another thing that happened with my mother, found out she forgot how to read. She came down with dementia We're really bad. And she passed away last fall, and we were there in June, towards July, July. And uh, she always wanted to go into the big TV room. You know, they have great big TV lounges, and she would have a thing back, and she'd be looking at the TV, and I'd say, well, hey, Mom, how you doing? Fine. And she'd look around and say, look at all these old people. <laughs> I said, well, what about them? She said, look at them. They're sleeping. That's all the reason they come down here. I said, Mom, you were asleep when I walked in here. She said, no, I wasn't. I was resting my eyes. <laughs> but I grabbed a little, one of those little magazines that you see at the grocery store or the cash register. And I was looking at it. And she said, let me look at that. So she was looking at it. And she just... So I told my sister, I said, well, I had a reader that. She said, no, you didn't. I said, yes, I did. She said, no, you didn't. She can't read I said, she can't do read. She said, no, she can't. She's forgotten how to read. I told Faith, I said, I'll oh, prove my sister doesn't know what she's talking about. So I went back the next day and I said, Mom, what's this word? She goes, I don't know. She had forgotten how to read. So all those letters that I had found that were stuck in her dresser that had never been opened, began to understand she couldn't, she didn't remember what they were. So we began to send her flowers, cards, and the one thing that she loved the most was pictures. Pictures of her kids, her grandkids, and her great-grandkids. And I'd take a photo album when I go visit, and I'd say, okay, Mom, who's this? And in her case of dementia, her long-term was perfect. She could remember 60 years ago, look at things, and she said, well, I know who that is. And I had a picture of her, and she looked like she was about 17. And I said, who is this hip-hop girl here? She looked at me, and she goes, what's me? She knew who that was. But uh, she had forgotten who her husband was. She didn't remember who I was one time. Dementia is a terrible thing. And I've had a lot of kids, grown-up kids, I'd say, how come you don't go see your mom and dad? Here's what they say. I can't stand to see mom in this shape. Or I can't stand to see dad in this shape. 
And I have to be real careful. I want to say shame on you. They were with you when you were at your worst. Now's the time they need you. Go see them. Spend some time with them. One of the things that's, that, that, that's sad but kind of funny in one way, we were there last year. I've been there three days in a row. And the fourth day I went in to see her and she says, is this the first time you came to see me? I said, no, Mom, I've been here three, three different times. And my mom, as I shared with she had a lot of, she got older, she developed a sense of humor that was kind of unique. I used to call her every Sunday and then it got to where she wouldn't answer the phone. She just didn't understand. But one time I called her and the, the, the day that I dreaded happened, she didn't know who it was. And I kept trying to tell her who I was and went on and on. And, you know, I'm your son and the pastor. I live in Little Rock. And she said, I don't know who you are. Started out my conversation. She hung the phone up on me. I called her back. I said, why'd you hang the phone up on me? She said, I just thought it was some old nut calling me. <laughs> and I said, well, it's not a nut. It's your son. She said, I don't have a son. <laughs> yes, you do. And we went on and on and on. And finally she said, well, you know, if you'd come to see me once, once, once in a while, maybe I'd know who you are. I said, well, Mama, I live about 700 miles from you, and I didn't come to see you two weeks out of the year. She said, well, next time she knew who it was, but that's sad. But when you love so much, doesn't know who you are. But it comes. It comes to all of us at one time or another. Dementia, I run into it all the time. And Maggie Morris is another precious lady that's got it real bad. And Every time she sees me, she'll say, oh, where are you teaching at now? I'll say, Rose Hill. She'll say, where's that? And I'll tell her. She said, well, is that a church? I said, yep, that's a church. I said, you're still in the membership role. She said, oh, that's good. And we'll talk for 10 minutes, and then she'll say, well, where are you at? Rose Hill. That's sad. You see people who were once so sharp. So spend time with them when they're sick. Not just physically sick, but they get mentally sick too. Don't give up on them. Spend time with them and let them know that you love them. Take time with her. Moses said, and Paul repeated, honor your mother that it may go well with you. And you know what? I believe God is pleased when we honor his commandments, don't you? Amen. I think he is. And God is exalted when the world sees us demonstrating respect and honor for our mothers. Mothers, let me say to you, we, we pledge our love for you today, and you're special, and we honor you for me, who you are. And there are many times that you have done so much and didn't get a second thank you from your family. <coughs> forgive us. You could say forgive us for we know not what we do, but if that's the case, then shame on us. But I want to encourage you, if your mom's still alive today and you can visit with her, be with her, some of you are here today with your mom. And that, I can say that means a lot for mom. I saw the smiles on some of these moms' faces. Thank you for coming and being with mom. If your mom's out of town, call her. Say, Mom, I just want you to know I love you. And if your mom is going on to heaven, think about some of the good times that you had with her. A lot of things you can share. I think the last thing, the very last thing I did with my mom was uh, we talked my sister into going out with us to the nursing home before we left to come back home. The next morning we were leaving, and I said, Joyce, my sister said, well, let's, let's go. We'll go with you, Steve, and, and let's take her downstairs. They've got a flower garden out there. There's a walkway. So we went downstairs, and, and I, I think I've told you this, but I'll tell you again since it's about mom. My sister looked at me with a smile on her face and she said, Mom, would you like for Steve to push you all the way around the walkway? He would love to do that, wouldn't you, Steve? Love to, but Mom, I'd love to. So she said, okay. So I pushed her all the way around and we stopped and looked at the little waterfall, looked at the flowers, pushed her back and we sat down. And about five minutes later, my sister gets that big smile on her face looks at me and she says, Steve, would you like to push mom again around the block? I'd love to. And my mom, she said, Mom, would you like for Steve to push you around the block? Would you like to go around the block? And my, and my mom looked at her and she said, yes, 
but this time I want you to push me. <laughs> I said, she's sharper than you thought she was. <laughs> but moms, we, we love you and we thank you for being with us today. But all the mothers, please stand up. I'd like to say a special prayer for you. And we're going to let you out here early so you can meet all the Baptists in the restaurant, take your mom out. Father, what a joy it is to have all these mothers with us. And we just thank you for what they have met and what they have done in our lives. Bless them. Be close to them. And I pray that you stir within our hearts the desire to check on mom more often than we've ever thought about. To talk to her on the phone, to send her cards, to take her out for lunch, just to be close to her. And Lord, we do thank you so much for the opportunity that you've given us to have a mother. Bless each mom that's here. And go with us all and give us a great day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.